Hello, 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 everyone. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, happy Tuesday. How are you all today? This is Prayer Call with Shalanta. And yes, I am here on a Tuesday for um, the Bible plan that I have been doing. Um, today is part five, so I'm excited. It's um, the final um, day of the Bible plan. And if you have been missing the Bible plans, you can go to Prayer Call with Shalanda and you can watch the Bible plans there. Or you can go to my YouTube channel, The Real Lala Jones. And I am on there also. Um, I'm going to pray real quick and then go from there. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we humbly come before you declaring that you are a good God and awesome God. Thank you for today. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your love, your kindness that draws us. Thank you, Lord God, for being an understanding God. Thank you for your word. I pray that you hide it in our heart, that we may not sin against you, Lord God. Give us your wisdom and your under understanding, Lord God, and let us behold wondrous things out of your word, out of your law, and feel the love that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So if you're just getting on, this is Prayer Call with Shalanda, and I'm also on my YouTube channel, The Real Lala Jones. Um, so I am doing a Bible app. It's called The Miracles of Jesus, and it's just um, a Bible plan series, and it's called The Miracles of Jesus, and it's just about, you know, just loving the love of God. That's what it's about, and, you know, I'm doing this Bible plan series because I just want to give the love that God gave to me, um, you know, in, in different situations that I face. I use the word to help me to become better, to be better, to heal, and not be bitter. Um, so, yeah. Um, you, I am located in Rochester, New York, um, where it's really, really cold right now. <laughs> Let's just say that. And I have my box here today. Um, this box was given to me by somebody and I have been using it and applying it to my life, studying, meditating on it. And what we're going to do is we're just going to get right into it because this is part five, part, part five, sorry, part five, right? I'm brought man from the fifth floor, but <laughs> this is part five. And it is the last day of the Bible plan series. So I just ask that you guys just just be ready to receive what God has for you. Um, the Bible plan is called the miracles of Jesus. And you can just go right on your phone, your tablet. My light shines so bright. So when I try to show what it is, it's really hard. I don't know if you can see that. It's called the miracles of Jesus. It's right on your Bible app of uh, your Bible app on your phone the plan I normally do these plans by myself but I figured I would do it with you guys so I picked from the box and the scripture that I got and I pray that you all would meditate on it I pray that you would um, pray on it and just hear from God on this this is all about his love nothing else but God's pure love Psalms 55 22 cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee he shall never suffer the righteous. Oh, we already did this. We already did that one. So, Psalms 147 and 3. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Psalms 147 and 3. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up the wounds. Psalms 147.3. That's good news. That he will heal our hearts and he will he will you know heal those wounds that we have those rough spots so the first devotional I'll just do a quick review was water into wine it was when um, Jesus was at the wedding and Mary was there his mother and um, they ran out of wine and 
uh, Mary came to Jesus and told them told him that they ran out of wine and he was just like okay so what do you want me to do and she said oh I want you to give them wine and um Jesus had told Mary that it yet it wasn't yet his time to perform his miracles and to do his ministry but he's because of the the love of God and the compassion from God he was still able to work that miracle and and that was an act of God's true love to provide not just any kind of wine but the best kind of wine so that was wine into um, water into wine that was the first one and then the second miracle that Jesus performed was a great haul of fish and that's when um, Jesus was preaching to the people, multitude of people in the boat and um, he told Simon to push the boat out farther because he wanted to perform he wanted them to go fish and Simon was like uh, yeah Jesus we already been out there for weeks after weeks after weeks on that boat um, trying to catch some fish and ain't no fish out there but even though Simon knew that and he doubted like Jesus telling me to do something he doubted him he did it anyway even in his doubt Jesus performed that miracle when he they cast the net in the water like Jesus told them to the net was so full of fish that the net began to break so that happened and then there was so much fish that they had to send out for another boat and that was just the act of God true love and he promised his disciples well you no longer will be fisher of of fish you will be fishers of men um so that was a great miracle that jesus performed in the act of god's true love it was called the great hall of fish the third one was calming the storm and um they were on a boat and the sea of galilee and um and the winds were waging and the the water the the waves were waging raging and they were afraid and it was unlikely for them to be afraid because they were always in the sea of galilee and they knew how bad the storms were but still um in their doubt god sees the storm and their fear god sees the storm and like if you just see these patterns of God's love and what he'll do even when you're doubting him even when you fear and and you don't want to do something or you don't want to go anywhere because or or you you don't want to do what you think God is calling you to do he still he will provide everything you need to to do that miracle to perform whatever it is that you need from him and and more and he can calm the storm in your life. Um, so yes, we're on the fifth and final day of this fi uh, Bible plan series, the miracles of Jesus. And his last miracle, the title is Jesus Walks on Water. And I pray that this is an encouragement. This is for you to be inspired, loved, and lifted up. This is not to bring you down. I'm not a preacher. But this is um, something that helped me. This is something that healed me. This is something that allowed me to be a better person and a greater person by filling myself with the word and receiving God's true love. So we're just going to get right in. Jesus walks on water. This final miracle well discussed occurred right after Jesus and his disciples fell, fed the 5,000, sorry. Jesus instructed his disciples to get back into their boat and set out for Bethsaida. Meanwhile, Jesus sent the people home before he went up into the hills to pray. Later on that evening, Jesus saw the disciples 
boat in the middle of the lake and noticed that there appeared to be struggling in the wind and waves. Then Jesus did something unimaginable. Mark 6, 48 says about three of Jesus came toward them walking on the water. The verse says that Jesus intended to pass them, but they screamed when they saw him because they thought he was a ghost. So right now, um, we're on the final I'm sorry. So right now we're on the final miracle and that was Jesus. They see Jesus walking on water and they think that he's a ghost. Jesus spoke immediately by telling them not to be afraid, but instead said to take courage because he was with them. Right after that, Peter called to Jesus and said, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water Matthew 14 and 28 says that's what it says in Matthew 14 28 Jesus obliged and over the side of the boat Peter went so right now Peter is telling Jesus to if this is really him and you're really performing this miracle call me out call me out and Jesus did. He called him out. At first, things were going well for Peter as he was walking on water toward Jesus. But then he took his eyes off Jesus and, and eyed the huge waves instead. In that moment, he grew terrified that he was sinking and he begged Jesus to save him. When Jesus reached down and grabbed Peter, he said, you have so little faith. Why did you doubt me? So at this point, Peter was walking to Jesus and his eyes were on Jesus. But what happened was Jesus got distracted. I mean, Peter got distracted. He got just he took his eyes off of Jesus and began to look at his circumstances around him. And he began to see the waves raging and they're out in the deep in the middle of nowhere. So he got fearful um. in that moment he grew terrified and was sinking and begged Jesus to save him when Jesus reached down and grabbed Peter he said you have so little faith why did you doubt me then Peter's and then Peter and Jesus climbed into the boat and the chaos around them settled and the disciples proclaimed, you really are the son of God. Matthew 14, 33. So they saw this Jesus walking on water and it made them in all that and all these, the chaos and the winds blowing and everything else and even allowing um, Peter to come out on that water and, and saving him after Peter took his eyes off him. Have you ever been in a situation like that? Have you ever took your eyes off of God and you just, went, you begin to go under, but God reached down and just picked you up? Even though he said, keep your mind on me, you'll be in perfect. Sometimes you just, you get caught up. And you'll begin to fall. But the best thing about God is he'll reach down and he'll catch you. He will pick you up. He will turn your circumstances around in that mess that you made. You made that mess. But he will turn it around. So today's takeaway is fixing our eyes on Jesus. It's amazing how we can be following Jesus so closely and paying attention to his words. And then we slightly shift our glance to the troubles around us and immediately begin to sink. Ever been there? I think we've all been there. I think every last one of us have been there. Just begin to sink because we took our eyes off of what was really important. It's been said that too often we glance at Jesus and gaze at our problems when we should be doing the exact opposite. 
gaze at Jesus and glance at our problems. Mm. That's a good one. I needed that. I'm going to read that again. It's been said that too often we glance at Jesus and gaze at our problems when we should be doing the exact opposite. Gaze at Jesus and glance at our problems. If we just not give as much as attention to our problems, to our issues in our life, and focus more on God, he will give us the solution for our problems. It feels easier to focus on what's wrong, doesn't it? But fixing our eyes on Jesus will bring a calmness to our souls, even when trouble looms around us. The question we all need to ask is, where are our eyes fixed? What are our eyes fixed on right now that we can't do God's work, that we can't build that relationship with God? What are we so focused on? It's just a relationship. You don't have to clean yourself up. You don't have to say, oh, when I stop doing this, when I stop doing that, when I become this, when I become, no, 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 no. Because what would, what would be the sense of needing God if you're going to come to him cleaned up? He will clean you up. He will build your confidence. He will build your, your faith. He will, he will take away the things that are not meant for you and replace them for the things that are meant for you. I can promise you that. It's not about what I read. It's about what I know and what I experience. Because that's what type of God I serve. If you keep your eyes on God, things will change for you. Things will manifest where you begin to see things differently. I, I, I'm a, a test to it. You will begin to see God in you. The more you look in the mirror, you'll begin to know that I am his masterpiece. He created me so I can do that even if I think I can. I can't fail. I can't think. I might slip a little bit. But I'm going to get caught up because you want to know why? Because my eyes been on God. My eyes been on Jesus. As you finish this plan on the miracles of Jesus, maybe you're waiting for your own miracle. You're not sure when your heart's desire will be granted, when your healing will come, or when the relationship will be mended. Even in the midst of all those unknowns, you can still rest in the truth from this plan. We serve an abundant God who doesn't define us with our doubts, is, is with us no matter what, calls us to give in faith, and desires that we fix our eyes on him and him alone. I'm going to read that again. Even in the midst of all of those unknowns, you can still rest in the truth from this plan. We serve an abundant God who doesn't define us with our doubts, is with us no matter what, calls us to give in faith, calls us to give in faith, and desire that we fix our eyes on him and him alone. So... Let everything go and put your eyes on God. Rest on God. Meditate on this scripture. Psalms 147 and 3. He healeth the broken heart and bindeth up their wounds. I'm not saying it because it's something I read. It's what I know and have experienced that he can do it if you it i think people are getting it seems like it's a lot of work but it's not because god only i mean if you just take 10 minutes out of the 24 hours in the day that we have and give it to god and talk to him and love on him or just tell him I need you it's been days it's been days where I just been like 
God, I'm weak. And you said in your word, and I promise you, this is this is the exact way I talk to God. I remember, I remember one day I was so tired in my body, my mind, just trying to get things together in order, and and I, I, I just I didn't know what I was going to do. And I said to him, Lord, I'm weak. But I know what your word says. Your word says that in our weakness, your strength is made perfect. So where I am weak, I need your strength. Because you said it's made perfect. That means I don't have to carry this weight. That means that situation ain't, it's no longer mine. That means that problem is not my problem anymore. It belongs to God. And I took that weight and I literally put it on God and took it off myself because I couldn't carry it. Because he's stronger than anything. And as strong as we try to be as a people, we, we're not that strong. We're not as strong as we proclaim to be. We need God for everything. It's not about what I read. This is just, it, it lines up. I wouldn't be giving it if, it if it didn't go in here first. If it didn't go in here first. I wouldn't give it. If it didn't heal me, I wouldn't give it for you to heal, for you to be healed. If it didn't change me, I wouldn't give it to you for you to be changed. I can only give you what I got. So the chapter, the um, scripture is Matthew 14, 22 through 33. Matthew 14, 22 through 33, 33. And straightway Jesus constri constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up to a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the winds was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking in the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled by it. It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. So Peter is saying, Jesus, if that's really you, call me out there on the water. Do you ever try Jesus like that? Do you ever try God like that? I do. I do, because I need some assurance sometimes. I need to know, God, did this you? Did you really say that? Sometimes we scared to ask God. I hear people say, you're not supposed to ask God questions. What? What? Oh, I'm asking all the good questions, bad questions. I want to know why. I want to know why. Why we don't ask why? Why, God? Why did you want it to be like this? Why did you create it to be? Why did this happen? I ask. I'm not scared to ask. And most of the time when I ask, I get an answer. It may not come in the form that I want it to come in, but I get an answer. It may not come when I want it, but it's always on time. And Peter said unto him, Lord, if thou bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. So Jesus called them out. We talked about this. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand. And he caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst 
without doubt. And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased, the wind stopped. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, O oh, a truth, thou art the Son of God. So, we see the bad situation. But in the midst of that bad situation, God was like, let me show y'all something. Let me let me increase y'all faith a, li a little bit. Let me build y'all up a little bit. And he went and walked out on that water. And and Peter was like, I got to, I got to see, I got to know, I got to know. If we ever just doubted God that much that you just like, I got to experience this for myself in order to really know. But that's the best part about it. That's how you build your relationship through experience. That is what our purpose is for through the experience because that's all we can talk about. We can't teach somebody something that we don't know. And it's easier to teach somebody when you have experience in that situation. So these, this plan was about the miracles of Jesus and his love. It was more about his love for his people he will increase your faith while you're doubting while you're just straight faithless and and nothing looks like it's right it's coming together you started something you don't know how to get it running whatever this was a bible plan to increase your faith to let you know that god loves you so much that he can do exactly what it is that you need him to do in the middle of your storm, in the middle of your doubt, in the middle of your loss, in the middle of chaos, he can build your faith. He will show up and he will show out. He will not only give you back what you lost, but he will give you double or triple because that's just how big God is. That's how, that's, that's how much he loves us. He loves us so much that he will he will perform he will do something unthinkable just to help you to believe because that's the purpose. The purpose is not for us to have the title and have no. The purpose is to Know who you are. Know who God is. Give what God is giving. The purpose is to build up your faith so that you can do what it is that you need to do to help the next person. To inspire the next person. And even, you know, great people that have become great pillars in our communities um in sports and um the music industry you know they speak of this it's not just you know a biblical thing it's but we we we're trying he, i'm gonna try to we have to know our purpose, period. Because in order to give, in order to give, you have to be in the right area because we all have to be in the right lane. We're all being used individually for different things. And God want us in the right place at the right time, just like the disciples. So he, he can increase our faith, so he can build us up, so he can teach us how to teach and, you know, just be everything that he called us to be. I really believe that is what he has given us 
that is what he has left us with. I was looking for something. But trust God. Trust and believe that your situation can change, your circumstances can change. Because I remember when mine was, it, my life was not in the right place. And I, but I trusted God. I did. I, I mean, I did. I had to sacrifice a lot. Things that I like, things that I wanted, things that I wanted to do. Places I wanted to go. I sacrificed a lot to find that place, to find that relationship, to find that love. So that. Whatever it is that God wanted me to do, that I can do it wholeheartedly. Because I know what it's like to hurt. I know what it's like to be without. I know what it's like to be faithless. I know what it's like to doubt. I know what it's like to question God. I know what it's like to question our circumstance. I know what it's like to be in hell and have to find your way out. And that's why this Bible plan was important to me because I want everybody to be free in their spirit, to be free in their soul, to be free within their self, to be free with God. Because if you are free in that area, I promise you, the rest will follow. The rest will follow. Once you have peace, once you have clarity of certain things, the rest will follow. And even when people doubt, you have to keep going and you have to just trust God. Because it's not people that we need to trust. The last thing we need to do is be trusting people. What we need to do is trust God. And then give him back what he gave to us and love his people love his people that I've, I've said that before that's how we love God that's how we give him back the love that he gave us is to give back to others because that is the act of his true love to love people to love his people to honor his people to serve his people in some way shape or form so I pray that this Bible plan has been a blessing um, if you watch the whole thing or if not, some way the seed has reached you and I pray that the plant or the, the, the tree or whatever it grows into, an apple tree, a, a, a orange tree, uh, anything, plums, a beautiful, fruitful tree. And that people could actually eat and be full and be restored and be made whole and be loving, caring. So I'm just going to pray out real quick and be out and let y'all go on about y'all Tuesday. Um, I pray for each and every one of you that have viewed. Thank you again for viewing. And I pray that this finds you in, in perfect peace. Father God, in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. God, you are so big. And you are so awesome. And you're so amazing. You can do all things but fail. You are omnipresent. You're omnipotent. You're the same God today, yesterday, and forevermore. The day you came into my life, you are the same loving God to this day. Thank you for all that you are and all that you do. I ask now that you forgive us of our sins and restore us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness, creating us a clean heart and renew within us a right spirit to serve you wholeheartedly. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your love. 
Lord, I just send out peace and love on tonight through my prayers that everyone will receive peace and love and sweet dreams and wherever they are when they return home that they will find their home in perfect peace. In Jesus' name, thank you for your word and hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against you, that we can use it for the snares of the enemy. Because we know that it's like a two-edged sword sharper than any sword. Lord, I love you and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. I love y'all. Good night. I pray for each and every one of y'all. I am in Rochester, New York. You can find me on Lala Jones on Facebook. Lala is underscore blessed on Insta Instagram and Lala uh, Lala's Closet both on Instagram and Facebook. All right, y'all. I love y'all so much. Shout out the Community Justice Initiative and everybody else. I love y'all. I'm in Rochester, New York. This is Prayer Call with Shala.